right, everybody. Hail and welcome back to another episode of Midgard Musings. My name is Jesse, and I am the host here on this channel. If things pertaining to Norse heathenry, Germanic paganism, and what a lot of people nowadays refer to as also true, uh, then I invite you to please subscribe to the channel. Make sure you ding the bell and select all, so that way you are notified of any time that I do upload new content. And don't forget to check the description area for my link tree link, which includes all of the ways that you can support Midgard Musings by following my various social media accounts, following my podcast on Anchor and Spotify, as well as donating to the channel monetarily or picking up merchandise at MidgardMusingsStore.com. So be sure to check all that stuff out. Thank you all so much for your support. All right, so today's video is actually kind of an interesting one because um, if any of you folks that follow me also follow Eric Word Weaver Sherman over at the Ravens Call, um, a link to his channel will be annotated along the way of this video. Um, then it's going to be the timing of this video is is it's going to seem as though it's riding off of the coattails of his because Eric just did a video last week about um, pendants and uh, specifically like Thor's hammer pendants and that sort of thing and the meaning behind you know wearing them and, and it's a really great video. I would encourage you guys to please uh, check that video out. It'll be annotated along. Um, up here in the annotated cards and it'll be down in the description as well um, but uh, oddly enough this this video my video here today although it is talking about uh, symbols um, and we're going to be talking a bit about things like Mjolnir pendants or, or other um, you know trappings and things that you might find um, around pagans necks or um, on their bodies you know in some form or fashion this video was not planned around Eric's um, it's purely coincidental, but again, the timing of it is is actually pretty awesome. So um, you guys can kind of compare notes and see how him and I think independently of each other because there was no collaboration. Um, this was not planned. Um, so you just can kind of see how things go with it in a very organic sort of way. So again, as I said um, with today's video, the power of symbols in heathenry um, and what what I kind of mean by that. So. I wanted to talk a little bit about this subject because um, a lot of folks may be coming into heathenry that are new, um, may find themselves uh, trying to officially become heathen, right? Uh, as sort of like a rite of passage. And you know, you'll, you'll see, or at least I have um, online, a lot of people asking questions like, <clears throat> you know, I think I'm ready to, to, uh, to get my hammer. You know, I think I'm ready to uh, to wear my hammer. I think I'm worthy to wear my hammer now, or wear some other symbol that represents your faith or your you know <clears throat> interest in following this um, religion. Um, and we're just you know we're going to talk a little bit about that, and then some of the other symbols and, and where the power of those things are. But I did want to touch on that particular part first because um, this idea, or this notion, you know, about being worthy to wear a hammer. Um, or whatever. I, I, I think that has a lot of other influences, some baggage maybe, some um, Christian influences or other religious influences that um, people feel like you, like you have to be uh, of a certain worth or of, of a certain value of a type of person before you can wear something like a Mjolnir pendant or a, you know, a, a Tiwa's rune pendant or any other sort of runic symbol or, or anything like that. Um, and I've never I've never really understood why that is, you know, it's not like you have to probate for a certain period of time before you can be found worthy, as it were, um, air quotes, to wear these symbols. Um, I think that if you're going to wear a symbol of your faith, whether you're, you know, Christian, heathen, um, Muslim, uh, Buddhist, or any other sort of, you know, Hindu, any other sort of um, religion in the world, you know, uh, Jews will quite often wear stars of David. Like it's, it's a symbol that represents your faith. It's a symbol that represents your belief in a religion or belief in in a faith or spirituality. And it is an outward symbol. It's a symbol that people that when they see it should be able to know and recognize that that is who and what you are. So it's pure choice. You know, you don't have to wear a Mjolnir pendant if you know to be really pagan. Uh, you don't have to wear a pentacle. Um, or, or, or a pentagram or, or any other sort of occult symbol to uh, officially be that thing. 
You know, you don't have to wear a cross to be Christian. You don't have to wear an ankh to be, uh, uh, you know, to follow Egyptian occult magic or anything like that. It's an outward display of this is who I am and this is what I believe in. You know, so to to say that you, you know, am I worthy yet? Am I worthy now? When will I be worthy? I, I don't see the sense in that. So for those out here that may be, you know, watching these videos and wondering, well, when did you start wearing your pendant? When, you know, when did you uh, convert? You know, at what time did you decide where your pendant? I can tell you uh, for surety that there, I did not have a specific day or time where I just woke up and was like, yep, today's a good day to put the pendant on or today's a good day to, to wear the to wear the uh, the symbol or whatever like that. I just started doing it because of this, to me, was the symbol that when others see it, they would know what I believe in or at least have an idea, okay, well, he's he's definitely not Christian, um, but he's he's wearing a hammer, so, he, you know, what is that? And, it, and it's a conversation starter, too. You know, people see it, and they'll go, okay, or if I've seen them, I'll go, okay, I see you wearing a hammer, you know, are, are you pagan as well, or how long have you been pagan? And believe it or not, a lot of people wear these things just because they think they look cool. Um, we're going to get into some of that here in a little bit later later on in the video. Um, but, you know, I don't want people to, out here thinking that, yep, it's, it's that time now. I've got to wear the pendant, otherwise I'm not really pagan. It's, it's, that's kind of ridiculous to me, and I don't see there any being any point in that. If you want to do it that way, if that's the way you want to, you know, kind of uh, give yourself a, a time frame of, you know, you have to kind of go through like a probationary period, uh, that's something that you instill, or if, if it's like a tribal thing, if you're trying to join a tribe and they kind of have those rules, that's the tradition or a thu uh, for that tribe that you're, you know, uh, trying to join, maybe that's where there's uh, some value to it, but you do you and don't worry about what other people say. All right, so now that we got that part out of the way, I do want to talk about, you know, some of these pagan symbols that we're talking about and the power that they have. Um, and before we go very deep into that, what I do just want to say is that the symbols themselves are just symbols. They don't carry with them any sort of special, you know, innate power or whatever. It's not like, you know, um, if you go to a store um, and buy a, a Mjolnir pendant that you'll suddenly be connected to the, to the gods more than you were before um, or anything like that. They are just, they are symbols. The power that these symbols have are, they are, in, like the power is given to them by the people that wear them, that that wield them, that um, may in some cases appropriate them. We'll talk a little bit about that in the video. Um, but the symbols by themselves, just like kind of like the runes and such by themselves, they're not magical symbols. Okay, they don't carry with them any sort of innate powers that make you a better pagan um, just because you wear them and just because you have them. What they do, though, is at least for me is they provide a sort of um, focal point or anchor point, as, as it were, um, to remind me, not that I necessarily need a reminder, but that, that gives me you know, something to focus on and something to, um, when I feel the weight of the hammer around my neck or when I feel the weight of the, the ring on my hand, if I'm wearing you know, uh, jewelry, anything like that, when I feel those things, they are a constant reminder to me of you know, where I am on my, on my spiritual journey, on my religious uh, ideologies and things. It's, it's that constant reminder of, you know, that I, that I am living a life that is to honor my ancestors um, and honor the gods and goddesses. So when I'm conducting myself, when I am representing not just who I am, but it, it's, it, to me it's like a, you know, people see that symbol around my neck or, or on my hand or wherever and um, it's a representation of, of, of heathenry in, in a sort of way you know so that gives that symbol power because when people see me um, behaving in a certain way they can say alright well he's wearing that hammer he's wearing that symbol whatever it might be um, and he looks like a, a you know a respectable person and, and uh, looks like a, an honorable person or he's behaving in an honorable way um, and that, that's power right there, because that's, a, that's reputation, that's refrain, that's all kinds of things that, you know, uh, in, in heathenry have a lot of value to us, and, and things that we as pagans, at least Norse pagans, um, strive to maintain strong refrain and build strong refrain, good reputation, things like that, because that is what is going to last when our physical bodies um, are no longer here. 
So that power, right, that, that power that the symbol has is it comes from from without right it doesn't we don't give it the power necessarily we, we our behavior our actions our deeds I feel are indicators uh, for others that wow this person who's wearing that symbol um, is a certain way and it's a reflection on the religion to me in similar uh, light you know or in retrospect and even in a sort of way you've got people that wear these symbols that misbehave um, and and they misappropriate the symbols for things that they do not mean and therefore put a sour taste in the mouths of others. So, you know, things like that started out as perfectly, you know, just like we'll, we'll use like the swastika for an example. Look at the power that that symbol has now as a hate symbol, whereas, you know, for centuries and centuries, it had nothing to do with hate uh, by any means. It's, you know, the sun wheel symbol and it's seen across multiple cultures, um, but because of the misappropriation of that symbol, um, it has a lot. It has it has hateful and, and utterly negative um, connotations that go with it. And reclaiming it as anything other than what it is known by now is is it's near impossible. You know, you can you can educate people all you want to about the historical um, meaning behind the, that sort of symbol. You know, like the. Uh, uh, the swastika, the black sun wheel, the the uh, the wolf sign goal, you know, those symbols that because of, of recent development, because of recent misappropriation, you know, you can you can almost just write it off as saying, well that's that's it. You know, what the symbol meant at one point, it's shadowed now by the uh, by the bad things that, that it has come to, to represent. Can they ever be reclaimed? That remains to be seen. We can continue to educate, we can continue to to, to strive and and um, you know, put add more good to it, so that way, you know, people that come into heathenry or that, or that see these symbols know for a fact that this is not what it's, that's used for. This is a misappropriation. This is a misrepresentation of that symbol. Um, but like I said, it's it's there, there's been so much discussion around it over the years that I think it's it's beyond that now. Um, we will never be able to reclaim a symbol like the swastika as something other than what the, the Nazi Party in Germany did. Um, with it and, and made it become so um, as far as the rest of our symbols go um, we see examples pop up all the time um, in largely um, white supremacy and, and racist and bigoted groups trying to pass themselves off um, in many cases as heathen or as pagan we see uh, Thor's hammer being worn by Nazis and radicals and, and white supremacists we see the runes certain runes misappropriated and misrepresented by the same types of people. We see other symbols such as Volknuts and, um, uh, like I said, runes and, and, and hammers and all different kinds of things that have no place um, in, in those hate groups and in those, um, you know, just radical, bigoted, um, and, and just terrible, terrible people's uh, groups. But they, but they are there and they, and they pop up. So we have to continually work on giving them the right power, right? Because again, that reputation, that frame, um, although it's tied to people, um, when those symbols get misused and when those symbols get misrepresented, um, it can be a damage, it can, it can be damaging to um, the reputation of, of people who aren't even a part of those things, you know? So in other words, if I were to continue wearing my hammer and, and the symbol of the hammer becomes something that is so tarnished that it, it, that it nears or becomes like the swastika has, then um, it, it could be very detrimental to my reputation by, by wearing it openly. So we have a bit of a responsibility, I feel, as, as pagans nowadays to be educated enough to give the, these symbols the, the right level of, of uh, exposure and, and educate the people to, to give it the right power that it's supposed to have. That's where I see that the power of the symbols lies within heathenry. It's not in the symbol itself, it's in the knowledge of what the symbol represents, you know? The hammer to me represents strength, it re represents um, protection, it represents resiliency, you know, um, um, and fighting for what's right and defending those that cannot defend themselves. Um, it's a, a symbol of fertility, I feel like it's a, you know, life force, it's, it, as, as, as Thor uses it for, you know, protection to destroy chaos and destroy Jotun 
uh, forces from invading Asgard and protecting Midgard with his hammer. Um, at the same time, it is also a uh, symbol of life, as we see in some of the stories and throughout the lore, uh, where it's used at like weddings and things like that to bless and hallow um, sacred space and, and, and sacred ceremonies of that nature. Um, so there's so much good around symbols like that, that that's where, the, that's when we, when we say give something power to it, when we call it what it is, when we, when we identify it in those sorts of ways, um, that is where I truly see where the power of symbols lie. Now aside from obvious symbols such as, you know, runes, uh, Thor's hammer, Mjolnir, um, the Valknuts, Aegis Yalmer, you know, some of the runic staves and that sort of thing, other than those things that we know of as symbols that again by themselves are just symbols but the power that goes with it uh, or goes with them is, is comes from the outside um, and is given to them um, by people by us um, and how we are how we behave ourselves and, and, and how we act when donning those symbols uh, what are some other things that can uh, be you know the, the symbology of heathenry right um, for me there are certain things in nature that um, because they are part of nature, have power within them as, as, as living things, right? I look at things like uh, oak trees and acorns and things that to me represent uh, like a, a living, you know, physical representation of, of things like Thor. Um, and uh, I have, and still, I had and, and still have uh, an acorn from oak trees um, on my altar that, that uh, represent to me Thor, you know, um, other things that like uh, antlers, deer antlers, um, for me help you know, represent uh, the fertility of, of Freyr. Uh, so I have, you know, antlers on my altar to, to represent him. Uh, so these are symbols which again, um, it's a little bit different. They're not like an inanimate object or, or a cast object or things like that. These are things from from the earth, from life, from living creatures, from living things. Um, and I have to believe that there is power within, there's innate power within things like that, you know, um, because they, again, they come from a life source. So the power that comes from those sorts of things are, are is, to me, is a, uh, it, it, it's a bit different than just, you know, a necklace or a pendant or a ring uh, or anything quite like that. Now, with regards to the inanimate objects, the things that we talked about before, like pendants or jewelry or whatever, how power is given to those symbols, like I mentioned with, you know, um, how we represent ourselves. I believe power can also be um, given to things through their use, right? Um, for instance, I have this hammer, which is a, a, an actual, you know, sledgehammer. It was, it was something that my father has used and his father and grandfather, I believe, had used. Um, so it's, you know, it's quite old. Um, it's quite worn, but this is a this is my ritual hammer. It's not used for the physical labor of things anymore. It's used for ritual work. It's used for uh, religious work. It's used for um, the things that are pertaining to the sacred. So again, that the hammer itself has power when it is being uh, wielded for its intended purpose, and it has power when it's used in the um, in the in the ritual work that I use it for. It obviously has you know, runes um, painted all over it, if you guys can sort of see from the light, yeah, there's there's runes all over it, and there's, you know, Mjolnir um, burned into the handle, but again, by itself, it's just a piece of wood and stone. Um, when applied, and when, when it's used for, for its intent, um, therein lies its power. So, with that in mind, I feel that again, that, that power can, can be uh, given to things through the intent, through the deed, through the action of the person um, intending to do so or wanting to do so. Left on its own, left by itself, you know, it's just an, it's just an inanimate object, right? Kind of like people wanting to, uh, I don't know, ban guns because they kill people. No, people with guns kill people. You know, the gun itself is just the gun. It doesn't pull its own trigger. It doesn't you know, uh, fire itself. It's, it has to have something behind it. It has to have an, uh, you know, an operator behind it to, uh, to execute what it's intended to do. So that's where the power in, uh, it lies. It, it's power is given to it by the person, uh, wanting to do so.
So that's my take. Not a very long video, so it should be pretty basic things to think about, um, but it was something that had been on my mind that I wanted to, to share it all with you here. So don't forget to check out Eric's video and then be sure to uh, comment down below if you guys are watching this on the live premiere. I'm anxious to see what you think about it in the live chat. Um, but everybody else, please head down into the comments and let me know what you think. You know, where do you find power in? What symbols do you find power in? And why do they bring, why do they, ha why do they have that effect on you, you know? Um, so head down into the comments, let me know what you guys think. Hail, thank you so much for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next one.